neighbor and say, let it go. The score is not even, but let it go. You didn't get in the last word, but let it go. They never paid you back the money. You can just quote out those telling you that you, you're going to just again <laughs> guide you to someone out there. Someone out there could be. Challenges, so many challenges. You know, um, I will tell you, that it's very, it's very funny. You know, uh, when I came in Osaka, uh, you know, I came in Osaka, and my first place to stay was in Chaisa. You know, uh, I, I, I was staying with my sister in Chaisa, and you know, I started looking around for a job because, of course, I needed to do some work before I, I finally get into the university. I have to mention that it was a very difficult time for me. How are you able to divide your time, you know, with your part-time initials, your family and work as well? How do you divide your time? Well, I, 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 I do it, um, and also I, I exercise a lot. Okay. Yeah, I exercise, I play soccer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I play soccer. You the soccer. money, but let it go. If you let go of where you've been, God will give you so much of where you... It's been a beautiful Tuesday evening, and welcome to the pulpit which comes to every 18 to 19 on a Tuesday like this. And we are live uh, on uh, Facebook and YouTube on our page, which is uh, Liberation TV Zambia, and also live on Topstar, channel 458, and GoTV, channel 96. Also live on Movie TV Decoder, channel 43. So you can watch us on those uh, platforms. You can also download the My Strong TV application on, on Google Play, and download uh, uh, this app, and you're able to watch Liberation TV on your phone. You can uh, send your SMSs to 1978 And my guest uh, this evening is a Bishop Nyoni, who is coming from uh, Life Deliverance Temple. This is right here in Osaka. We just here to help us uh, share one or two things on this uh, platform. Welcome to the program, Bishop. Thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. I think I've been known you for quite a number of years during our interaction. And I think this is your first appearance on Liberation TV. Of course, people would want to know who is Bishop Nyoni. Uh, Bishop Nyoni is a man who is coming from a humble background, born in Lusaka, just uh, right up in uh, Kanyama, growing up in Kanyama. Uh, I've been in, in the ministry for the rest of my life. Uh, I was baptized, that was uh, 1977, in the Apostolic Faith at that stage, who is the founder of the uh, Apostle Paul Kalema. And uh, my father was uh, one of the leaders there. So I'm married, having nine children. Okay. So has been your journey in it. Maybe also the title, I, I like a bit about uh, Life at the Reverence Ch uh, Temple Ministries. And also, how has been your journey in the years that you've uh, you know, formed uh, this church? Uh, first, I started with Apostolic Faith and that church where I was born, mm -hmm. where I grew up. I submitted my leadership uh, to the leadership of uh, um, uh, uh, Maiza Chilakola in Kanyama. And uh, as I was growing up, due to the calling of God, uh, I worked also with the United Pentecost Church. Then uh, I came out from the United Pentecost Church. Uh, I started the church called Bible Way Church of our Lord Jesus Christ here in Zambia, which later changed to be built on the Rock International Ministries. Due to the calling again, because this church it was, uh, uh, we were working with the people from uh, Britain. But due to my calling in the ministry, that God really wanted me to serve him independently, then I started this ministry, Life Deliverance Temple, okay. where I am now. Mm -hmm. uh, there are challenges. Being in the ministry is not an easy thing. Being in the ministry, it takes you uh, to dedicate yourself giving yourself it's like he dying while you are still alive because uh, there are challenges you can reach you know you reach at a stage whereby you say uh maybe i need to quit because of challenges mm -hmm. but when you have that calling which we say calling 
when God is with you, God is going to hold you. He will hold your hands and He will make you to overcome. Okay. Now, looking at where the church is, um, how are you helping the people around the area that the church is uh, operating from uh, there in Kanyama? The church, every person has a problem. People, they need the answer from the church. Because the church is accommodating people, different people. They are rich people, they are poor people. They are people who have no fathers, they are people who have no husbands. As the church, we must stand strongly and preach the message, the message of deliverance, the message of repentance. And as the church, we stood to help them how to come out, you know, to train them to do the businesses. Because the time of just being preaching repentance, being baptizing, filled with the Holy Spirit, that time is gone. People, they need to get to their feet and know what they are doing. We need to pray. As we pray, we need to have an answer to the prayer. But if we pray, then we don't have an answer which means our prayer are prayerless. Everyone who prays must have an answer. You know the problem that we have nowadays, Brother Kayombo, in churches, we are fond of praying, then you go and sleep. You say God is going to come from heaven and provide it to you. No. Those days are gone. You need to pray. What you are praying for, if you are praying for a job, wake up in the morning, go and look for a job. If you are praying for a business, pray, have something to do then God will answer it. Now in terms of uh, skills development in churches, what would be your advice to other churches uh, in terms of, you know, trying to come up with, like, like, like you said, that you, know, you, you can pray, but if you don't act, you know, prayer cannot actualize. Now in terms of uh, skills development among young people and women, like you said, training people with skills, what would be your advice to you know, churches that don't have such a kind of programs to you know, set up you know, programs for young people and for women to give them skills so they become self learned even as they come to church, they pray, but they have something to rely on. You know, as the pastor, you are there to guide the people. Today we are seeing men and women are going to pubs, you know, they are going to prostitutions, lacking of something to do. We are seeing young boys going to the bars, drinking beers, beating up people in the street because the church is not affected to their life. But what I can advise is that uh, we need to come up with uh, uh, projects like, uh, you know, carpentry. We need to come up with uh, farming. We need to come up with, uh, you know, uh, building. You know, when you keep the young ones bees, they will not go and uh, drink beer, they will not go and beat up people in the street. Mm -hmm. They will be bees doing what they are supposed to do to earn their living. By the end of the day, as you are keeping them busy, the, when they knock up, they go home. After going home, the days of church service, they will come for a church service. But if you are not keeping them busy, I tell you, my brother, we are killing the future of the youth. Okay. Now, what finds a true Christian? There are those that uh, just show up on Sunday, and the rest of the week they are doing other things. What defines a, a, a true Christian? What I want to say, brother Kayombo, you need to understand. Christianity is not a shirt. Christianity is not a coat. Christianity, it's a lifestyle that you are living. Okay? Because what we say in the church is, the church is not a beauty. I am the church. And if I am the church, 365 days, I must be the church. My action, my conduct, my doings, my speech, everything, it must be the church. So if you are just saying, no, I go to congregate, I'm a Christian, but you are a liar. Let us come into the Bible. Let us see how 
the Christianity, the first Christianity, they were being called Christian. They were, they were, there was uh, some qualification which made them to be Christian. If you, you remember, when Jesus was going to heaven, did not left the Christians. He left the disciples. Out of the disciples, what they were doing, people they were able to identify that these people, what they are doing, they are doing things which Jesus was doing. So they are Christ like. This is where the word Christian came from. It's not everyone uh, it must be called a Christian. Christianity, it's a lifestyle that you are living. Okay. Now, is the church doing enough in this country to, like, like you've put it, there are a lot of, uh, you know, issues going on, like you said, the issue of uh, young people not having something to do and they end up, you know, beating up people, ending up into prostitutions. Apart from those uh, things you've mentioned, is the church doing enough to help address certain issues that are affecting this country? I may say we are not doing enough. Reason why we are not doing enough is that uh, the church is not united. If the church is united, all the pastors are united, all pastors are coming together. I'm sure when we are united and we, we come together, we can come out with a, a concrete res resolution to help our youth. But since the church is divided, Everyone wants to call himself an island. Everyone, he knows what he's doing in his church. Forgetting that the church is a body of Christ. Bishops, pastors, we have to come together. When we come together, as the Bible says, how good it is for brethren dwell together. It is like an ointment oil upon the head of Aaron. You know, so unity is power. Where we come together, we can come up with a tangible problem for our youth. And the church can be, you know, effective. But nowadays, church is not effective because we are not united. Okay. So what can be done to bridge this gap that you've mentioned? We need to be united. Okay. We need to be united. We need to uh, bury the differences of doctrine. Because the doctrinal issue, this is the thing which is making the pastors to be not united. But if we can buy the doctrinal issue and we take Jesus as the center, we take Jesus as the leader, just focus on Jesus, I tell you, the church will have an impact in Zambia. Okay. Now it comes to the issue of uh, winning souls, going out there to evangelize, and uh, you know, getting people into the churches, uh, what programs do you think should be put by all the churches in Zambia to ensure that those that do not know Christ are able to you know, be attracted to the church in terms of uh, the kind of programs that the church, because sometimes people shun out from you know, going to church because of certain you know, restrictions, the restrictions which are put uh, you know, in some churches. So what do you think should be done to bridge that gap so that the church become conducive for people to you know, go and you know get saved. You know what I can tell you, Brother Kayombo, no one has come to church saved. You understand? Me? We should accept people the way they are as they are coming to church. You understand? Beside what they are. As they are coming to church, as the pastor, you are there to preach the message of repentance the message of transformation, people will be able to change. You understand? So when you are coming to say evangelism, don't do, do you know there is uh, evangelism, don't do evangelism, there is evangelism where you mount some crusades, there is evangelism, host evangelism, there is evangelism, even food evangelism. There are people that are lacking food, they, they will tell you I cannot go to church because I'm lacking this. You need to go there and help them. Let them see the hand of God through you. Because the Bible says, help the vulnerable. They need to be helped. And God will not come down and do the evangelism 
God will not come down and provide the needs of people. So God is using me. God is using you to reach an eligible so that they may see the hand of God. So in terms of uh, programs to, like you said, that no one comes to church served. But at times when someone comes to church for the first time, the moment they enter the building, they are judged from you know, the onset. And that puts them off next time they won't see them come to church. And there's maybe also an issue of uh, those that move to churches to seek for instant solutions. What's the best way to help such people? Because they want they will come to a church and expect results the same day they enter the church. This is what the talking earlier on that as pastors we need to be united. Because if we are united, I'm preaching Jesus, and another church is preaching Jesus. When we are receiving visitors, we need to know how to overcome them. And as the first time a visitor is coming to visit my church. We, in, in our church, we have got a, what we call um, a membership form where we have written all the requirement of the church. You understand? That we are able, uh, whoever comes for the first time to my church, I always invite them into my office. Then I get to chat with them, you know, man to man, eye to eye. You understand? So that I am able to understand their problem, so that I can solve their problem. But many churches, you find that uh, when people come, even in the first time, the pastor has got nothing to do with them. Especially when you look for awkward. No one will look at you. You just be there, and after the service, you, you, you are there standing on your own. No one is welcoming you. What we must do, a church, Brother Kayombo, is like a family. When you have children, then you, again, your wife has a pregnancy and you're coming out with a new baby. You understand? You always forsake the old babies and you are embracing a new baby so that that new baby may see the love unto you. This is what you must be done in the churches. So in terms of those that come seeking for instant miracles, what would be advised? Uh, the church, those who are coming for miracles, the church is not for the miracles. I want you to understand. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. When you find these things, all your need shall be handed unto you. You understand? Now, if you go for a miracle, miracle will not save you. And you have the, if you are coming for a miracle, Miracle will not add to the growth of your spiritual growth. And miracle will not save you. But when you take the word, you hear the word, the same word will make you a miracle. Because you need to understand, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God, and God just spoke a word, let it be the light, and the light was there. So when you receive the word of God in you, you become prophetic. Whatever you say, you believe the word of God. Whatever you pray for shall come to pass. So first of all, you need to learn God. You need to understand God. You cannot rush for the miracles when you don't know the one of the miracles. First of all, you need to learn. As a child is growing in his father's house, he learns the principles of that house. He learns it. He, he, he will learn how to know his father. Okay. Now, coming back to the issue of uh, prayer, uh, you said you know, prayer that deeds does not work. Now, what's the time, the, the, the best time to, to pray? Well, normally, we receive the same you know, concerns during these uh, programs that maybe is it all right? Maybe I just, the way we are here. I start to babble and pray in tongues, disturbing that person sitting next to me. Or I just find a quiet place, kneel down and pray. So what's the best time to the best time and place to pray? Uh Brother Kayombo, mm -hmm. prayer has no time. Mm -hmm. Prayer you can pray in your house, mm -hmm. you can pray in the toilet, you can pray while you are driving. Mm -hmm. You understand? And the prayer is not shouting. You understand? Um, 
I may say there are people sometimes who are sick in the hospital. They cannot shout. You understand? Mm -hmm. But they are praying inside. You tell me that God is not listening them. So the prayer is inside in you. Okay? Mm -hmm. I've seen men, especially in Pentecostal circles, there are people who are shouting while they are, they are lending. Their the house is not theirs. Mm -hmm. They are even hammering the, the hall. Mm -hmm. And the, the whole of the house will come out and say, ah, Mutipakia children. They say, no, no, Mutima na kumika, sige gira pamozi. That is no lacking of wisdom. That's ignorance. Prayer, you can pray in your heart. And especially in the book of Matthew. It says, as you pray, enter into your room and close the door. The Father who sees in secret, who will see in your heart. I mean, I want you to understand, Brother Kaomu, there are three or four types of prayer. There is a prayer of thanksgiving. You understand? If I give you something, brother, you are going to jump and say, thank you very much. Thank you. You, know, you are thanking me. There is a prayer whereby you are seeking the face of God. Yeah? You got to go there and kneel down, speaking to your God in secret. And you know, as you are shouting, it's not God, it's not that God is not listening. God is listening. So God is not listening by shouting. And the Bible says the time is coming when the true worshiper shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, regardless of the place. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now that topical issue here is the issue of uh, you know does does this misunderstanding in giving the, the offering tithe and the other dated uh, givings in China? Maybe can you try to enlighten our viewers out there the issue of giving vis-a-vis -vis tithe and uh, you know the normal offering that is offered uh, in church? Giving, you know, giving. Giving to God, you are not giving to the church. The church is giving to God. Because I am the church, you are the church. But you are giving to God. The reason why you are giving, you need to understand very well. Giving is part of worship. Giving is worshiping God. As you are giving, you are not giving for any other reasons. But the reasons why you are giving, you are showing love unto your God. You are showing that you are worshiping your God. God is the one who gives you. And you show that what we call appreciation. You say, thank God for blessing me. And you are not only giving because God wants to bless you. You are giving because God loves you. And you need to show your love unto God. Mm -hmm. So those that say, if I give more, means the pastor will buy you know, a Range Rover, a new car, what's the advice? But they think the more they give in church, they're making the, the pastor, you know, richer. That is wrong. Because in every institution, even in your house, there are some principles. We need to understand a pastor, pastor does not write an application for employment. They are being employed by God. And the same God is the one who is paying them. So when you are giving, you are not giving to the past. You are giving to God. Starting from, you know, in Genesis, if we look at in Genesis, you remember Genesis 4 verse 4. They were asked to give, Cain and Abel. They were asked to give. So giving, it's a part of worship. When you are giving, you are worshiping God. Don't give and look at the pastor. Give and look unto God. Give and forget. Mm -hmm. But if you are giving and you begin to count again, which means you are not giving? Okay. Now, turning back to the issue of, uh, of course, we have the issue of, uh, you know, praise and worship in churches and also the issue of women and uh, youth uh, ministry. You know, Zambia is, uh, you know, a youthful uh, country. Maybe also going back to the issue of uh, grooming young people in churches and you know, promoting women and their youth uh, ministry. As a church, what programs have you put in place to ensure that uh, you know, young people are kept active you know, 
youth ministry and also the women also they also have their own ministries they are focusing on to build the church you know together you know we are now coming back to the question which you questioned me earlier on mm -hmm. about uh, having projects mm -hmm. in the church mm -hmm. you, are, you understand it? even women it's not only meeting on Thursday they sing sing then they go back they must have problems you know like visitation uh, uh, like fundraising you know like you know uh, teaching other teaching others how to cook because there are other women they just went to to their husband's house they don't know how to cook so they are there to teach uh, one another to how to cook how to wash how to iron these are the things that women uh, they need in the they need to focus on it very much. It's not only going to church, you are in the church, you are just singing worshiping, worshiping and in praise. No. Mm -hmm. You must have problems. You know, problems to build to build uh, homes. How to respect the husbands. Mm -hmm. And then when coming to youth, also youth they must have their own programs. Um, training programs as I say the area on. You understand? Also, then they need to be taught because we have seen nowadays how the youth are coming up in the church. You know, uh, we, we have got so many breakouts in the church. Uh, you understand? Because youth are not ground, they are not being ground very well. When a youth is just, you know, grown up, and then you give him a pulpit and say, you no, know, you can preach today. If people they shout to him, come on! come on, yes, you can do well. Then uh, at the end, you, you find that he has rebelled against him, his spiritual father. Right. Spiritual father. Mm -hmm. So in the need such type of programs to bring them. You understand? Mm -hmm. if, if I may tell you, uh, when you look at uh, um, a Roman Catholic, mm -hmm. have you seen any uh, young youth rebelling against the, the fathers? No. Reason why? They have been grounded how to respect the elders. You know, myself, I never, I never rebelled against my, my spiritual father. Mm -hmm. I grew up under the administration of my spiritual father. He taught me how to respect the elders. He taught me how to run the ministry. You understand? So on that corner, I'm able to be what I am today. So the young ones, they need to learn to their spirits. Submit to your spirits and learn more. Okay. Now that's the consequence of, like I mentioned, the issue of rebellion, which I've which we are seen also, uh, where, you know, the pastor who's being groomed, because like, like you said, given the people to preach, people shout your name, go to the man of God, and tomorrow they want to form their own uh, churches. What is the, co the consequence of rebellion? When you go from a spiritual father, you just you know, go and do your own things without you know, being released. You have no blessings. Mm -hmm. Even if you can do greater things, but you have no blessings. You know, there are things which comes. Where we are going, when things that comes, they will ask you, who is your spiritual father? You understand? They would want to see your spiritual father. If you don't have a spiritual father, then you are street adult, street adult pastors. So what I can urge the youth, we see Eli and Samuel. Okay? Samuel submitted to Eli. We see Joshua to Moses. We see El El Elijah to Elijah. Have you seen? Huh? So submission, it's more important. When you submit to your spiritual father, the time when he comes, you are matured. You need to say, you, you go uh, to your father and say, Father, it is my time now. Uh, I feel I can stand on my own. But standing on your own, what you are supposed to do, you should start something under the administration of your father. And your father will be able to recommend you, says, now, you are matured. I can release you. Brother Kayumba, the church is like the family. You understand? The family, when the time for you to know to marry is not there, you are not allowed to marry. 
and give a time for you to be matured and the family comes together, you propose a wife and they go there and pay dowry and they say now, we are now making a wedding for you. There is a wedding also as you are being released by your father. There must be celebration. Your father must celebrate to release you as you are starting your own ministry to bless you, even to buy you some gifts. Okay. Can you be happy? Uh, your son has pregnant in your wife and you celebrate, you say, I'm celebrating my son as a pregnant your wife. Can you celebrate that? You can't. Same price. The one was rebuilt. It's like a person was pregnant a uh, 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 So he has got no blessings to his father. Okay. Now, also in the same vein, there's the issue of gossip, you know, in churches. Uh, for example, you have a new member coming to your church and they come with all sorts of stories from where they are coming from. And, you know, how do you treat such people? They come with a lot of, you know, things from where they are coming to come and tell you. If you could talk about his father, mm -hmm. then one day you talk about me. So I don't tolerate mm -hmm. such type of members. You understand? Because if I tolerate such type of a, a member to go speak, his spiritual father, where he's come from, one day he will move from my ministry to go to other ministry and he goes to about him. So, as the pastor, I need to shut his mouth. Listen, um, Brother Gayemu, gospel is of the devil. The people that gospel are not repentant. A person was repented, he felt compassion, you understand? He's got mess. When he sees something goes wrong, he will simply come and approach you and tell you what you are doing is bad. I can see you are doing something bad, then I cannot come and approach you to tell you what you are doing is bad. Then I go and tell somebody, is it that you are going to reform yourself? No, you are not going to reform. If it's true that you are doing a mistake, you are wrong, I have to come to you and tell you what you are doing is wrong. That's Christianity. Then ghost will be not there. Okay. Now, there is the issue of uh, overnight prayer meetings vis-a-vis -vis the noise and pollution. We've seen a lot of complaints from, for example, if your church is in the middle east of uh, you know, the residential area and there's an overnight going on and there's live music playing, you know, disturbing those that are not attending the, you know, the church, the, the actual overnight. And we've seen the council moving in, you know, to intervene and uh, protect those uh, complaining uh, citizens in those areas. What is your take on the issue of you know, live music during overnight prayer meetings? Uh, we need you to come up with a strategic mm. how to conduct our overnight prayer meetings. You understand? Because, uh, yes, we are doing the will of God, but others, they don't know that we are doing the will of God. But the only thing that we can do is because us, we are there to do the will of God, and we cannot stop because others, they don't want us to do it. You understand? We are going to do it because God says we need to do it. Because uh, I want you to understand, is that overnight every day? It's not every day. We are doing it overnight maybe once in a month. And then we like to me. Overnight, until the Holy Spirit speaks to me. Since we have entered this year, we have never conducted any overnight. Because the Holy Spirit hasn't speak to me. Others they do overnight because it, that church conducted an overnight and it was so good. Mm -hmm. Us also were going to conduct the overnight. Mm -hmm. You know overnight, we need to conduct overnight with a purpose. When you go to uh, the book of the, the Entronomo, uh, Exodus, mm -hmm. when the children of Israel were coming out from uh, Egypt, mm -hmm. for them to cross over, they did an overnight. You understand? Today, overnight, some of the overnight have got no meaning. They are meaningless. 
We need the overnight that are got me. Then that uh, some programs with uh, the stress societies uh, do come sometimes have uh, uh, programs here. And one of the main concerns that have come up is that uh, most of the churches operating have not formalized with uh, you know the society to have the certificates and to have actual number of churches you know, operating. But most of you know churches that are operating do not have the you know certificates from the staff society. Maybe what would be advice to those that have not yet formalized you know their operations and they are having you know church services without following the due process of uh, the law? Our uh, first, brother Kayomba, mm -hmm. when beginning. We begin small. We don't begin by registering. Mm -hmm. It's like a baby has born, is growing little by little. Mm -hmm. There are others who are still starting. Those they need to have an ample time for them to reach to the uh, to the level where they are matured to register. Mm -hmm. But there are others who are already uh, rege I mean, who are already matured, but it's just uh, what we say, uh, trying to disobey or undermining the, the rules of the register of society. Mm -hmm. it, 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 is a, it is a duty of the government to go in and see those churches who are not registered. And in for your information, we have what we call church mother bodies. Mm -hmm. What are the duties of church mother bodies? Church mother bodies, they have to work with the uh, register of society, hand in hand. Mm -hmm. You understand? We have also what we call uh, pastors fellowship in the compound. Mm -hmm. If the register of society they can work in hand in hand with uh, uh, church mother bodies, and church mother bodies, if they can work hand in hand with uh, the pastor's fellowship, they will be able, you know, to, to, to see who are registered and who are not registered. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, in terms of, like you've said, the issue of the mother church, the church mother bodies and the uh, self societies are working with the pastor's fellowship in uh, compounds. There is uh, the issue of, you know, some practice, you know, abusive kind of, you know, practices in churches, questionable, you know, and all sorts of things. Do you think the church mother boards are doing enough to regulate to ensure that, uh, you know, suspecting uh, church goers are not abused and, you know, all those concerns that come, come out uh, from such, you know, I said, no, the miracle this, the miracle that. Is the church mother board is doing, board is doing enough to help unsuspecting you know, Christians from being duped or abused? They are not doing enough. Mm -hmm. Reason why? They are not visiting the churches. Okay. Because if they are visiting the churches, they will be able to see are these genuine Christian or duplicating. Mm -hmm. You understand? While they are there, they will be able to advise how to go about it. What I can tell you is that so many churches, they have got no fathers. Mm -hmm. They have got no mothers. You understand? If the church mother bodies, they can come up with what we call the inspectors, mm -hmm. church inspectors, to go and inspect how people they are worshiping. Then I think on that corner we can do enough. Mm -hmm. And also advice to those pastors engaging in unquestionable practices, and also those uh, Christians who are falling prey to such practices. That's your advice to both. My idea is that uh, I want you to understand that these things, even in the Old Testament, we are there. Even in the New Testament, we are there. You remember one day Jesus gave a parable mm -hmm. that one man went to plant seeds, mm -hmm. good seeds, eh? and when the worker went to, uh, there in the morning, mm -hmm. they found that uh, somebody has gone there to go and plant evil seed. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, can we go and uproot it? Mm -hmm. What did Jesus say? Leave them to grow together. You understand? Mm -hmm. 
All that we need is us to pray hard so that those people, they may change. They may see the greatness God in us. If, no, I'm not there to judge. I'm not God. <coughs> Judging is of God. You understand? But we are there to pray for them. We are there to advise. If they cannot change, it's up to them. Because if they cannot change, this is why, you know, the church is not doing much. This is why even the government is coming in. You understand? The government is not supposed to monitor the church. It's not supposed to direct the church. The church is supposed to direct the government. Now they direct it. The government has seen that they are not faithful men of God. This is why the government is coming in to direct the church. We need to go to the area, to the place whereby the church is now established, the kingdom of God, or the kingdom of God is established. The kingdom, the kingdom of God is now having power to control the government. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, when it comes to the issue of uh, prayer and uh, fasting, on the, on the 18th of October, we had the uh, last day of prayer and uh, fasting, and we saw a number of Christians gathering up you know, to pray uh, for this uh, nation. Maybe what is the importance of prayer and fasting? And should we only pray and fast uh, during the set date, which is the 18th of October of every year? No. Prayer and fast, it is a churchy life. Mm -hmm. It's not only one day. Okay. You understand? We need to be there praying and fasting. Now, this 18th of, of, of October, it's all nice. It's also nice to pray as we come together, together as, as the nation. As the nation, we need to come together. It is good. I can see it is good also. Mm -hmm. Although it was declared by the a politician, eh? mm -hmm. it was supposed to be declared by men of God, but by men of God, they slumbered. There is no problem about, about that. You have to understand, from the beginning, we see Dr. Livingston mm -hmm. did prophesy about Zambia. You understand? And we are coming to the second, I mean the first Republican president, uh, our grandfather, uh, Dr. Kaunda. Okay? Now this is Zambia saying Zambia. You need to understand, where did we get the name Zambia? Zambia is from Zambezi. Zambezi is from Zambi. Zambi means what? God. <laughs> why, are, why are they not rejecting? He says, no, we cannot call Zambia uh, as Zambia named before God. They, they come and reject it because somebody has put 18th of October as a prayer and a fasting and a reconciliation. We need to follow. It is God speaking to those people. Chinova came in and declared Zambia is a Christian nation. Who is rejecting that saying Zambia is not a Christian nation? We are all following that Zambia is a Christian nation. Let's follow it and do it and see the benefit of uh, 18th of October. There are benefits there. We don't have to shine. You understand? And I feel that you know, there are some frictions amongst the leaders. Eh? I feel that like that day, which we say 18th of October, this is when we, they need to come up together and meet if we, uh, to see if we, they cannot shake hands together. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a nice day. It's a freedom day. You, you, you see what happened to the thing of our late uh, veterinary protection uh, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you see what happened? You know, it was so nice to see uh, our president, Chabalumu, and the HH shaking hands. You know, it looked like you were a little bit, but you can't. Why? Because you saw love. This is what is supposed to be done at 18th October. 
I'm still watching the pulpit which comes to you every week on Tuesday from 18 to 19 hours. And you can uh, follow us on YouTube and Facebook on our pages, which is our uh, version TV Zambia. And I uh, can send to your comments right here on our uh, Facebook page. And uh, you can also download the Mastrom TV application on Google Play and be able to watch the version TV Zambia uh, on your phone using the Mastrom TV application. And also live on our uh, uh, Top Star Channel 458 on Go TV Channel 96 and also on Move TV Decoder Channel 43. And my guest is Bishop Yun this evening, who is coming from Life Deliverance at Temple Ministries right here in Osaka. And you can send your SMSs to 097 and get to interact with us right here. Uh, on liberation TV, we just maybe read, read one or two messages and then we continue with our discussion. This one is coming from uh, Evans Mwari uh, in uh, Rhodes Park, right here in uh, Osaka. We're saying that uh, nice program. Uh, some churches which are coming now, it's business, and main churches in Zambia lost, have lost its value. Some they go to which doctor to get powers. Uh, most churches in Zambia are preaching prosperity. I don't know where we are going instead to preach about the God's God's words to many, to many, to the timber, too, too many timbers churches. This events uh, of Rhodes Park expressing his concern. Maybe you can also comment on what you know he's saying that um, it's business as usual. The church has lost its value. They go to which doctors to get powers. And they are preaching prosperity. I don't know where we are going instead of preaching about God's word. And that there's too many to them as churches here in Zambia. Maybe before you, go to, you can comment on that one before I go to my next uh, question on my list here. What we are saying, we need to understand what is the church? Mm -hmm. The very brother of mine is a church. So we cannot call a church. Timber. Okay? The wrong doings of one person, it should not portray a bad picture to the kingdom of God. People should read the Bible and understand. The power only comes from God. He's the one who gives power. If people need power, they need to seek the face of God. The Bible says when Jesus was going to heaven, he instructed his disciples, says, go at the upper room, pray, and wait for the power. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you shall receive power, and you shall be my, you shall be my witness. So, what I can say, my brother, read the Bible, and understand there are no Ntemba churches all churches no one wants the church no one has built a church the church has built only on Christ the Bible says in Matthew 16 18 upon this rock I shall build my church so there are two churches there is the church of the devil and there is the church of God so we need to distinguish ourselves. Where they are preaching the truth, we need to know this is the church of God. Where they are preaching false gospel, we need to know this is the church of the devil. So we don't have to mix the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. No. We are seeing the bars are mushrooming all over. In the market, in the street, there are bars. Why are they, are they not talking about the bars, but they are talking about the churches? So in terms of uh, one, be, be able to differentiate between the church of God, the church of the devil, how can they? Matthew 7, 13. Mm -hmm. So you shall know them by their fruits. <laughs> Read the Bible. Mm -hmm. You shall know them by their fruits. When you discover them by their fruits, come out. Go to the church that preaches the truth. The church that preaches, the church that reads the Bible. 
in truth and in spirit. Okay. Now coming back to the issue, I think we only have about, about eight minutes uh, to go. I want to come to the issue of uh, the issue of conferences and uh, yeah, conferences. Yeah, the issue of having uh, pastors, uh, pastors uh, meetings where you call pastors to some form of you know lectures. You share one or two things. And also the issue of uh, pastors seminars. seminars, yes, and the issue of uh, the conferences. How often should those you know two programs be held? to bring pastors together. Like you said that there's a lot of disunity among men and women of God in this country. And how can those meetings be used to foster, like you mentioned, unity among the church here in Zambia? I feel those uh, programs, mm -hmm. they need to be there often. Because if they are not doing it often, then people go astray. Then unity will not reign. But as we are coming together, share, you know, an iron sharpens an iron. Mm -hmm. Where I go wrong, my fellow pastor will be able to sharpen me. Then I'll be in the uh, in the in the in the boat. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now also church and politics. How do you look at that? Where, for example, you see during uh, election time. We see a number of politicians flocking you know, to churches, uh, you know, to seek for, to converse for votes, and they're given pulpits to talk. Well, how do you look at the church and its involvement in politics? The church must be independent. Mm -hmm. The church is not uh, the place to campaign. Mm -hmm. The church is where people receive salvation. The church is where the politician they need to receive salvation, repentance. The church is not a pulpit of campaigning. No. We are busy the pulpit. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and knowledge. So we need to know what does the pulpit mean? Only the anointed men of God are supposed to be able to stand on the pulpit. Now we are bringing somebody who is not anointed. Let us fear God. It is a time now that we need to fear God. And now, maybe, like, I, I still take you back to the issue of disunity and the impending dialogue process in this country. The church has been accused of you know, dragging this whole process from taking place. What is your position as a man of God? You are talking about reconciliation. Yes. You know, Brother Kayumbo, the reconciliation which we are talking about, mm -hmm. it depends on two people. <laughs> you understand? It depends on two people. There are two people fighting. If only one can humble himself, and say, no, this is too much. Mm -hmm. You know when the elephants fight, what suffers? Grass suffers. You know when these two elephants, they will come together themselves. One could humble himself. The Bible says, forgive your enemy. You understand? Mm -hmm. Forgive your enemy. And your Father in heaven will forgive you. Mm -hmm. It comes to humbleness. One should humble himself, just speak a telephone and say, no, my friend, and this is over. Where are we leading these people? If these people, two people, they can reconcile. You know, it does not even want to take many people to come into board, says, no, reconciliation. If I disagree with you, Brother Kayom, I simply pick up my phone and call you. Let us meet and talk. You understand? Know As we talk, we agree. Then this is when we can call the people and say, no, we have agreed ourselves. That's reconciliation. Mm -hmm. So are you optimistic that uh, this whole thing will take place? Because the church has been at the center stage of all this uh, thing. And you are a member of the, the clergy here in Osaka. Do you, are you optimistic that this whole thing you know, will be fruitful? Yes, it will be fruitful 
if he asks us the great men, we use wisdom. Mm -hmm. You understand? The only thing is not talking by very far. Mm -hmm. Let the clergy take a step and meet the opposition leader. And take a step and meet the, uh, our, our president. And hear the views of the president. And hear the views of the, uh, the, the opposition president. Mm -hmm. You and they will be able to bring those people together okay. as a church. We need to put peace and unity. Mm -hmm. Now, going forward, how can the church be instrumental in ensuring that the affairs of this nation, you know, they move properly in terms of economic, uh, you know, political, cultural, and all those issues? How can the church be instrumental to ensure that uh, the affairs of this nation, you know, they are moving in the right uh, direction? The church has to involve himself into these issues. Because we cannot say we are very far and we say things will move very well. No, we need to come closer and monitor these things as a church. So how? I feel the, we have what we call uh, the religious. You understand? Mm -hmm. The religious, if he, they can come up with a program. Mm -hmm. You understand? Bringing the clergy together and involve them into these programs. Mm -hmm. Then things will be okay. okay. Maybe also what to be your counsel to the Zambian citizen. Like there's a, been a lot of hate speech, you know, going on, which is creating a lot of animosity in this uh, nation. Maybe also the issue of uh, tolerance among us ourselves as citizens of this country. What would be advice to the Zambian citizens as a you know, man of God in terms of avoiding, you know, using language that might, you know, create problems for this country? My brother, what we need to know. We have got only one Zambia. And as we have got one, one Zambia, we are one people. And let us guide our nation jealously. We have got nowhere to go. This is our nation. Let us preach peace and unity. So I advise the Zambians to focus on love. Love covers a lot of multitude of sin. In love forgives. Love does not help. So if we love one another, we are not going to speak evil against one another. But all that we are going to speak, we are going to pray for one another. I urge Zambian to pray for one another as Zambia, it is a Christian nation. Let us all embrace one Zambia, one nation. One God, one church. Mm -hmm. well, thank you very much, uh, Bishop, for having time to come and uh, you know, discuss these issues that have, have come up during our discussion. And I hope we continue with such interactions that we give the public you know, the accurate information that they need uh, you know, to know. So thank you very much for coming this evening. You are welcome. God bless you, Thank and you. God bless our nation of Zambia. Thank you very much. This has been the pulpit, which comes to you every Tuesday from 18 to 19, and we are live on four of our platforms, which is our Facebook, which is Elevation TV Zambia, on Topstar, God TV, Movie TV, and also on, our, on the application, which is our My Strong TV, which you can download on Google Play and be able to watch Elevation TV on your phone. And my guest was a Bishop Yoni from a Life Deliverance Temple right here in Lusaka. Was just here to help us discuss and understand a few things that came up during this uh, program. For me, Life Parambo and the entire production team is good. Bye. See you next week and God bless you. The score is not even, but let it go. You didn't get in the last word, but let it go. <laughs> They never paid you back Maybe the money. You just quote out those telling you that you you're going to just say <laughs> that you know, someone out there, someone out there could be challenges so many challenges you know um i will tell you there it's very it's very funny you know uh, when i came in Osaka, 
uh, you know, I came in Osaka and my first place to stay was in Chaisa. You know, uh, I, I, I was staying with my sister in Chaisa and, you know, I started looking around for a job because, of course, I needed to do some work before I, I finally get into the university. I have to mention that it was a very difficult time for me. 